Hi, this is Ed, and welcome to The Outer Dark. Yesterday, as many of you guys know who have subscribed to this channel, I found what can only be described as reptilian symbolism right at the heart of the Vatican, in the Pope's audience hall. So, I thought I needed to dig a little deeper as to what this actually means and how to decipher the actual symbolism. So, stay tuned as The Outer Dark brings you five symbolisms of the reptilian Vatican hall. Number 5. First some context. Yesterday I found a giant serpentine monument in the Pope's audience hall, namely in Pope the Fourth's audience hall, or so it's named. The audience hall itself is made of reinforced concrete by an architect that was known for building bunker-like public structures, indeed monuments out of concrete. It was built in 1977, so it's really old in fact, it's been around there for a long time. But my first lead that something was strange was this window, and I said, that looks like an eye, it looks like a serpent's eye, so I dug a little deeper. And when I saw the audience hall from the back, where the back audience was seated, it really did take my breath away since what was revealed was this right here that is a giant massive reptilian face shaped into the direct architecture everything from the slits and the eyes to the scales to the fangs there was no mistake about it but what's behind this hinted symbolism and what can we see or gleam if we dig deeper well number four look at where the pope is seated we see him here from the back of the hall that is in fact seated in the mouth of the serpent or reptilian. In the very mouth, this is symbolic of the Pope being the voice of the serpent, in fact speaking the serpent's words to the audience. This might well shake your faith, that is if you're a Catholic, which I was. I actually went to Catholic school myself and was an altar boy. But here you can see it in plain view, clear symbolism, clear evidence that something here is extremely wrong. This image hasn't been photoshopped. This is real. This is built right into the architecture that was designed by those within the Pope's inner sanctum. But there is more symbolism. For this though, we have to go outside. Number three. Do you see anything strange here? You're looking at the hall itself. Do you see anything weird? Well, if you look carefully, it looks like the head of a giant snake. Can you see it now? In fact, it's almost unmistakable. You can see the snake's muzzle at the front and you can see its eye. It just looks like a snake. To me, this is yet more connective symbolism that what's going on inside matches the outside. Because since here we can see serpentine architecture with ease. Number two, let's head back inside and look at what the Pope himself sees. If the Pope is seated where he is, what does he see? Well, he sees a giant serpent with eyes once again. The audience is symbolic of almost the serpent's meal, and the Pope is not preaching to the audience under this symbolism, but the giant god-like reptilian creature himself. Why? Because this is what the Pope sees. Can you imagine that when they were designing this, that they designed this all by mistake? That this is some kind of high anomaly? No, because they spent literally years on the designs. They definitely would have known what the Pope would have seen from where he was actually speaking. Also, what the audience was seeing. So this is very strange and it raises some serious questions. What is going on in the hall? Number one. But the biggest clue, the biggest symbolism that tells us something is really, really wrong here is in fact what is missing from the hall, not what is inside it. Do you know what that is? Here is a clue. Now, think of the heart of Christianity and think of what symbol it has and think of what you do not see in this hall. You do not see any of it. That's right. There is no Christian cross. There is no cross in the entire building, at least no large statue, wall hanging or anything. There's no other real Christian symbolism either. There's no Virgin Mary. There's no Joseph the Carpenter. There is indeed nothing anywhere. All of these symbols are missing. But you might say, what about that 10 ton bronze statue that's seated behind the Pope, where, as the Vatican states, Christ is being resurrected from a nuclear apocalypse or a nuclear bomb? To which I would say, this, I believe, is a direct corruption of symbolism. That is, I've taken the former Catholic symbol 
symbolism of Jesus, Jesus Christ, and they've displayed it in a corrupted manner, therefore corrupting its meaning. This is just not the way that you display Jesus Christ in any kind of Christianic religious order. You don't display Jesus Christ with massive wings on his back rising up from an atomic apocalypse. You just don't do this. Look at representations of Christ from the past just to compare. Take a look. Now you can see that there's just a huge vast difference here. Something is profoundly wrong. I mean this statue which weighs 10 tons just looks like some massive thing like a boss from some video game or something from some horror movie. You just don't display Christ like this. And also note in this, Christ appears to have massive wings on his back. Half of his face also looks like it's missing, like he's been heavily damaged by the blast. Is this really how you display Jesus Christ? Ask yourself that. You don't even have to be religious. Just look at history and compare. So what is happening? Well, I don't know, but I'm going to continue to dig. You can be sure of that. But I think that this is significant and something really big has been revealed here. Something we found at the end of this trail of breadcrumbs, which started at a small pizza shop a month ago and led us all the way to the Vatican. Anyway, go out there and decide for yourselves. I don't want to tell anyone what to believe. At the end of the day, you have to judge for yourself. It's really the only way to always stay objective and find the answers. In the meantime, please give the video a like if you did like it. That would help me out a great deal. And let me know and others what you think in the comments section. Share any leads you have. I think right now at a time like this, it's important to stay informed and crowdsource our ideas. In the meantime, this is Ed from The Outer Dark. And until next time, guys, I'll see you later.